<clears throat> Thanks. You've already answered some of the questions I actually have as far as the letter from the Shenango County Planning and Development Board. Um, one of the ones that initially the concern number one on here, it sounded like there actually may be um, the county being in charge of Oxford zoning. It sounds like that's not going to be the case. There was just a disagreement of terms. Is that correct? Well, they used the Shenango County directory that was published, evidently. That's what they cited. And in that directory, it says under code enforcement, uns uh, buildings, it says Shenango County. And under zoning officer, we have our local zoning officer, right. Luke Ford. This, this is a zoning issue. It would be, by the moratorium, it would be the responsibility of the zoning officer. Now, the zoning officer may want to add to that, you know, so I'm not sure, but uh, the zoning officer is responsible for it. So I'll work that out with the county. There are some things that the county does. Their point was, if you're going to designate the county, as they interpreted it, then there has to be a memorandum of understanding between the village and the county for that to occur. Okay. So I really was curious if the zoning from Oxford was going to go under a county jurisdiction there. Um, you also addressed the second concern from that same letter on here, and uh, your response was that Binghamton case was a, a police powers case, not a, uh, a land use case, um, as far as the determination on that. They invoke their police powers okay. as opposed to land use moratorium. Okay, so you, that's what you're basing your whole decision on then is that part of the decision from Judge Levis and Binghamton. Not the idea that there is no dire need, that there is no necessity, time is not an issue, any that to you. And, and that's exactly. being just to you because as a that, mayor. That three-pronged test does not apply on a land use moratorium because it's obvious under a land use moratorium the whole idea is to take some time to work through these issues which would which indicate there isn't a dire need or immediate threat. Okay, well, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. And actually, I did mean to ask a question initially. Have all the board members actually received, um, read, and understood this uh, planning board review that's come to you? Has everybody had the opportunity to do that? Okay. I read it. I don't understand it. You're from well, there. I guess maybe that's why I'm talking about it. <laughs> okay. So, yes, me, me either, and that's why I'm questioning some of that. And. Uh, as far as that concerned, is that just the mayor's opinion? Is that the whole board's opinion? Is what the mayor's uh, responding to here? I mean, Terry says he gets to do most of the talking most of the time today, want to listen. I'd be interested in somebody else's uh, opinion on that also, not just for that very reason, to see what the uh, concept was from any other board, either John or, or maybe Joe. I, I'll, from my perspective, and this is just mine, Bill, I'll, I'll shout that's all, out to That's all I can ask you for. Um, <coughs> I think that's part of it. The Levis decision, and my understanding thereof, and kind of asking people who know law or are lawyers, does this make sense? Do I make sense? You can ask 100 lawyers and get 100 answers. You can ask them if the sky's blue. Um, my perspective on this and my willingness to pursue this for now is a couple of pronged approach. Um, I believe that the village of Oxford and its residents are better suited to kind of determine some of our local approaches to this issue, which I think is, is probably going to end up happening in New York, is my gut feel. So as far as setbacks or um, zoning or industrial processes in certain areas or within proximity to certain facilities, I think we're better suited than a bureaucrat in a cubic one all of you to decide what's best for us. So that's one of the reasons I want to take a break and, and, and study this some more. Um, I've seen the drive in the middle field things hold up so far. Um, so I'm pursuing it from that. I've got the same concerns. I, there's no secret. I'm friends with Mark Howe. Um, he's my neighbor. And I've got concerns about his 77 acres. I don't know how much they have outside the village. I understand that the gas companies get to draw the spacing units. It's my, is, that, is that correct understanding? Nobody's corrected me thus far on that. So if they can draw the spacing unit, they can lop off 70 acres here and keep 100 acres there. I'm not sure why that would cause them to go to force majeure, but that's their decision, not mine. Um, well, unfortunately, that's not Howe's decision either. No, I understand it's that. Made I didn't that. sign that so, lease. I mean, I okay, rather than waste a whole lot of time here. I'm trying to decide it on both sides. Okay, because I don't, I don't want to waste all my time on that, on that issue. Um, just like to say that I think 
by just letting this thing go its normal course, let the state come down with their information, and then go from there, be way farther ahead, save a lot of aggravation, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of wasted effort and time, actually. And, uh, and, and maybe it just actually would uh, be advantageous to, to listen to the state with their expertise over what y'all could be expected to do on a local basis here. I'll move on just a little bit, I'll make it quick to finish up. Um, one of the things that I have taken notice of, we're dealing with this, local businesses are going to be directly affected by the natural gas. If it doesn't happen, we're going to be adversely affected by it. Property owners, same deal. If it doesn't happen, we're going to be adversely affected by it. I think something can be worked out with respect to what is considered village and non-village, and hopefully over the next 60 days or so we can manage to do that. Um, one of the things is, I'm looking at this board, and there's, unfortunately Dale isn't here, but he also qualifies. There's one person that could be considered a business person on this board, and that would be Matt Bose. Okay, he's in the apartment house. That's the rental business, or like that. He has some concept of that. Uh, no one else here has any real business experience from having to sit there, have that be your only income, your source of survival being your business. You're doing it, not a job. So you go to a job. Someone else is responsible for keeping that here. And I'll tell you what, if there isn't any economic benefit from natural gas drilling here in a relatively short period of time. Some of the people that are happy with this and say it's good, I have a job, I don't need to, to uh, appreciate harvesting of the natural gas. As your jobs start disappearing, it will affect everyone and the economy here will get way worse than it already is. Um, so in closing, what I would like to do is just say that I have looked um, into the cost of some of this. Fuel oil, if you're heating with fuel oil, not natural gas, you're looking at um, just my own experience on the NYSEG website. It gives you a comparison on there. Uh, I'll be spending somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,400 this year in fuel oil at my house. And if I was using natural gas, it would be $1,400, so the $2,000 $2, savings. And that's off the NYSEG website that anybody can look at as an economic issue. And anybody here that's using natural gas for heating, cooking, laundry, or electricity to do anything, about 25%, up to 25% of the electricity that's generated comes from natural gas generation. So to have credibility and a little name calling here would be something, would be a NIMBY um, hypocrite because you're willing to use the gas for all of these different items from the heat, electricity, and at the same time, you don't want any drilling going on in your backyard. Okay, so it's really that fair. And for credibility, maybe you shouldn't all be that. If you turn off your electric, quit using the heat, quit using the gas for cooking, all that stuff, then I'll change my attitude as to where you're coming from. Thank you very much.